I first talked about climate change, I was a graduate student in the 60s. My professor would come back from meetings and talking about the droughts in the Sahel in Africa. Was this due to possibly a change of the climate or would it just cycle back in time? And so we climate scientists were researching this in the 60s and 70s. Uh, we have seen the effects of the continuing drought on the populations of the sub-Saharan areas, the Sahel of Africa, uh, devastation, and now war. Uh, we are seeing in many places conflict initiated over water, and mainly because the water is what sustains the food. I was at a meeting with a, you know, people from Sudan, and they argue with some validity. I mean, in the old days when the climate was okay, there was a, enough water, enough arable land as a result of that, that the pastoralists and the agriculturalists could coexist. The herders could have a field, and the people who grew the crops could have a separate field. As the stress on water availability due to the continuing droughts reduced that thing, they then got into conflict. And we have now, and then as we put artificial borders in countries, Sahel and, or the Sudan, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, Niger, these countries, those borders in the you know decade, well, hundreds of years ago, didn't exist. So when there was a drought, people could migrate. So we're now having borders that prevent migration. We're having a drought that is now clearly sustained due to the climate changing, due to human activities elsewhere is pushing this drought, so that it is getting. It is continuing and continuing and getting, in fact, more intense, even drier. And that whole area around the, of North Africa and actually extending in that latitude band around the globe, where we already have deserts, those are expanding. We are looking at drought areas in the south, or all around the Mediterranean area that are now being seen. And many countries in Europe and I'm doing a project now on climate as a national security issue. The Prime Minister of the United Kingdom said that this is the threat multiplier. When you superimpose a change in climate and the stressors, we are now talking about in a, that from a point of view of security, of human security, water security, of countries and peoples, that climate has the potential to overwhelm all the others. And I think we're now seeing it in certain places. We're going to see it continuing in others, and we need to take action. So as the climate warms, and it will get warmer, we will have more hot days, and there won't be just small numbers of plus 30 degree days, but many. Uh, we've seen the health impacts of that, of hot days. It comes usually with smog, which have additional health impacts. So we will see hotter days and correspondingly fewer colder days, which is in most cases a benefit. Uh, but with that will come heavier precipitation events. Uh, when it rains, it will rain heavier more often than it used to. So where we used to say, well, you know, it's the one in every 30 year rain event, will become maybe one in every 10 years. Uh, and correspondingly, the lower intensity rain events will become more frequent. So we need to worry about that from a whole variety of things, as simple as storm sewers to agricultural fields that are, would be washed away by heavy rain events. Uh, somewhat ironically, but correspondingly to that, we will actually have more droughts in certain parts of the country. In Canada, just thinking Canadian parochialism for a minute, we will have in the Canadian prairies, particularly the southern parts of Alberta and Saskatchewan, the climate today, which is a sort of a grassland climate, which allows us with suitable irrigation to grow crops, will become much, much drier. The water that supplies those, uh, the rivers of the Canadian prairies, uh, the Saskatchewan rivers, etc., uh, will, which are largely fed by the glaciers in the Rocky Mountains, those glaciers are melting. They will, in due course, basically disappear. The, even now, with today's climate, there is more evaporation from the prairies than there is precipitation. So if we didn't have the water coming from the mountains, we would have no rivers. And we are really concerned about the availability of water on the Canadian prairies in the decades to come particularly as we see growing populations, challenges between the agricultural side, the urban use side, the oil sector, other 
processing industrial sectors, water availability will become a major issue. And it's not only on the prairies, the southern interior of British Columbia, our best wineland areas in some way will be water stressed in the decades to come. Whereas, ironically, the coast of BC, which already gets, as a Vancouver native, probably more rain than we've ever wanted, will actually get more rain. Um, in eastern Canada, where I live now, in central Canada, the precipitation on average will be about the same in the future. But as we warm the climate, we get more evaporation. And the best estimates are is that the Great Lakes could drop by a meter or more. So just imagine your presently you have your small village drawing its water from the lake, or the, one of the Great Lakes or its associated lakes, uh, or you're probably putting your sewage back into it, or you have that nice cottage right on the forefront of the lake. Uh, imagine what happens when the, the lake level drops a meter and your intake valves are no longer intaking, your outlet valves are pumping into less water and hence more polluted. And your cottage, instead of having that little nice sandy beach in front of you, has a kilometer of mud. It's, those are significant changes in Canada. Uh, as we look to the Canadian Arctic, where I do research, we are now expecting, we saw, for example, for a long period of time, 20 years, the amount of Ar Ant Arctic sea ice, the floating ice, was decreasing linearly, slowly, but consistently. But then in 2000 and 